All right, let's do some chess tactics. If we can get this chess website to work. No, actually, it's my monitor. All right, let's not give. Uh, not let's not start flaming something that shouldn't be flamed, right? This is a beautiful website, and it's got so many advantages, including the comment section. But yeah, the database itself is very nice. And if you subscribe, which I have done once, but not right now, you also get uh, all sorts of new neat features. Like you can like create sets of problems, so you can specifically practice high-rated problems, low-rated problems. You get a lot more customizability in there. But yeah, with that being said, let's just go into the actual puzzle. It's uh, rook takes d6. Let's just see that. And obviously in a real game, you're like, oh yeah, just capture and then you can take the queen back. But we're playing with the knowledge that we can do more than that. Or, well, not specifically we know, but we have a hunch. Let's say it this way. A very strong hunch since we're actually in a puzzle. So, uh, let's see what happens uh, when I take that. Right now, I'm simply just a piece down. So, if I take this, I'm now um, the exchange up. So, that's, that's not bad. So I presume something happens after that, that kind of mitigates the problem. Um, let's see what, what he can do, like takes. If you take the queen, I simply take back. There's no more targets, like the knight can't do anything to the rook since it attacks uh, the differently colored square, right? This knight's going to attack the dark square, so it's not going to attack my... It's not going to be able to check or attack this, right? So that's that's out of question. Um, I'm thinking maybe that it has. I, I look at this tension on this diagonal, with both the king and queen, and my queen being there. A lot of tension on that, and then the ability to check here, right, with a discover check, and then instantly you notice, of course, while this defender is is, is sort of preventing that, and then of course the next thing you look at is can you take out this defender? And yes, you can attack that. So you're kind of um, iteratively looking at like problems and solutions, right? You're like, well, first of all, you notice this tactical element here, like this discover check. Then you say it fails because of this. And then you s try to look if you can mitigate the failure, right? And then if that fails, you start looking if you can solve that. You, you just keep going like that, iterating on your previous analysis until something sticks. So if I go night check... Let's say he goes, bishop takes. Well, this move order is completely botched up because now no, there's no tension on this anymore. So if I just take, then I haven't done anything. I haven't achieved anything. Um, what if I take here first? Then, let's see. This might get icky in terms of a checkmate because if I take, check, and... Well, obviously the rook can't come back because there's no defenders here. So I have to go king h7 and then pawn g6 check. Uh, pawn takes. Pawn check. Oh, wait, that has no... Oh, yeah, it still has this rook as a defender. Yeah, so that's actually really awkward because that's a checkmate. Uh, I can't go up because of this bishop. Can't go back because of the rook. So that's really awkward. Now, knight check. Knight check. I don't really know how to solve this yet. If I do it the other way, I don't see how that's going to work. So if I do a knight check, let's, let's look at that one more time. And bishop takes. Well, there's no checkmate threat, because I have nothing to diagonally attack this other than the queen. So if I sack that, there's nothing left. So check, takes, and then takes, that doesn't work, right? So doing silly moves like that doesn't work. Which begs the question, what is there? Like, what do I do? Do I simply take the rook? What was, what was the issue with taking the rook? In the first place. There was no real perceived issue yet.
So, so maybe that's just what I need to go for because rook takes doesn't work, knight check doesn't work, knight check fails for for just similar reasons, right? Pawn. So yeah, there's nothing here. There's no advance here. So yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna go with this. Sometimes this is a really funny problem, right? Because you're looking for an attack. You're like, well, this is what you would do in a normal game, but I know something's up. And then it's funny how usually when you do predictions, like you're doing it against a human and then maybe he's trying to level you. But in this case, the similar kind of mechanic of rock, paper, scissors where the system one-ups you because everyone's predicting like, oh, I think I know an attack, right? This blitz rating, look at this. Everyone's going for the attack off of the intuition that you know, with this one defender being under attack, something has to botch, right? But yeah, no, it really doesn't work because of the counterattack by white. So that's something you need to actually analyze. And that's what, what fills a lot of players' this problem. Like on a real board, anyone would, would see this, right? But in a puzzle like this, you presume something's up. And because everyone does that, sometimes the system... So many people predict this, that they predict it wrong, and this problem gets a nice rating like this. So you really can't be too sure of, 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 of any sort of prediction because because of the way the system works. If everyone's doing that same prediction, right, it might as well be that that's why it's high rated because everyone's predicting it wrongly. Somewhere people have to go wrong in order for it to have a high rating. That's just the rule of thumb. And you just have to figure out why. And even just beyond that, obviously, if you just analyze it objectively, you should be able to solve it anyway, right? But let's be honest, you do get an advantage because of you, you knowing what kind of rating the problem has, roughly. It's a very big advantage. Very big information leak. Alright, very funny tension here on both queens, so it's really just going to be about... Um, what was that called again? I mean, obviously it's calculating, just like called calculation, but um, it had a name. Counting, yeah. I think counting is a very in inappropriate name, but yeah, you're sort of like like figuring out the moves and then counting who's materially ahead at the end of it i think that's what it refers to like but usually counting errors aren't errors in like not counting how much material you have so i think the name is very very devious it's uh more of an analysis mistake right just pure analysis it's nothing to do with actually counting moves or counting material so um I think what it refers to is that it's very bland easy calculation right it's just like you missed the fact that someone literally has a piece more than you that or that they can end the exchange piece up and you just yeah like you're not uh taking into account for example a counterattack, something like that and you're literally just a piece down in the simplest possible way of just capturing it straight away that's kind of how i recognize it maybe that's not entirely accurate but let's just get on with it so it takes, what material are we on? I don't see, if I just take this knight, then I'm already there, right? Like I take the knight with the rook. What's he got? What's he got? Like rook takes. Oh wait, rook takes and we're now both on one piece and one, uh, one minor piece, one rook, right? Even on the pawns. So, let's see if I can do something here. Check. Well, that check doesn't really do anything because he has this escape square that I cannot in any way attack, right? This just completely safe, right? This diagonal is closed off, so there's no bishop threats. So, that's just absolutely out of question. Um, Now I'm, I'm I'm kind of looking at this tension on this diagonal, and I'm looking at this pin. But the problem is, first of all, if the queen takes, then queen versus queen doesn't do anything, and rook versus queen doesn't do anything if the queen's backing it up. So I don't see how I can exploit that. So rook takes looks very funny, but doesn't do anything. But I'm just saving that in my mind as a tactical resource if I analyze something that relates to that then I'll know what's up. Um, yeah, this is this is a rough one for me. 
this is a rough one. I don't see where to go with this analysis. Like bishop takes, knight takes. There's always that, that. Like this fork also looks so funny, but again, it's, this is my own piece, so it's not really doing anything. Takes, I take him, and it doesn't really do anything again. There's so many of these tactical elements luring, like like so close in the vicinity of working, but they're not working. I also noticed this tension here, but it, I presume that doesn't do anything because of this bishop. He doesn't have anything to pin that with, or otherwise get rid of it. Ah, uh, I really don't see it. I really don't see takes rook takes maybe 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 i can distract the queen actually with this what i looked at earlier so i take rook has to take i attack the queen which means that that if this were any other piece like a bishop he would just take this hanging rook but this threat supersedes this threat so he does have to leave and then the question becomes, can I abuse that? I could freeze up my bishop, but even that doesn't seem to do anything. Um, he can still go over here, which is my main problem here. So still any of these, these, these taking the rook or taking this bishop doesn't still doesn't seem to work at all. Taking this pawn doesn't do anything either, so like I don't need to pull this off and then take the pawn. Like I'm seeing all these sorts of combinations of tactical elements doing stuff, but none of it works so far. You have to find the combination that works. That's the idea of a puzzle, right? You have to piece the pieces of the puzzle together. Like Peter Piper that picked pack pickle peppers. Ooh, I kinda That was shaky. That was shaky. How can I possibly win a tempo? Because that's kind of all I'm looking for, the tempo gain, right? Because the piece worth here is always equal. Literally anywhere where I gain a tempo, I gain a piece. And that means I win. So I just need one tempo. One move ahead of my opponent and I win. But this is not checkable. Checkable, I don't know if that's a word. I'm making it a word. So takes. Knight takes. It's not really under any threat. Like, if I could get this bishop out with tempo... Or, or get something on this square with tempo. Like, yeah, sure, the fork, but again, I just have to back off, and he just backs off as well, and we're, we're even. That's it. No more... No more nothing. I'm just gonna go with this. Queen takes d4. Very wacky move. I guess I should have looked at this under the idea that the queen is still under attack. So this kind of... This is typically one of those moves where my brain already shuts off this option without consciously looking at it. And that's the part about practice. You can't shut this off. Like, if you start looking at every single move that's available, like, like checking here or something, which is useless, that's just not possible. So when you look at people analyzing positions oftentimes you'll hear them say well i could take this but that obviously doesn't work that's that's where the practice comes in because that might actually work and you don't see it like oh but it does work because of this and that and then international masters or grandmasters they they actually they're right like they're actually right like no there's no tactical element here i know what's going on here this is typical of that like i'm already saying no 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 just by looking at this like like look at this right and then you say, wait a second, I could take here. And I'm doing two things at once, that's my tempo gain. And what if he actually uh, takes my queen? Well, then I take his queen, and again, I have this tempo on him, right? Like, I had that crucial tempo. 
So when I do something like this, I, I win a piece, he wins a piece, I move a piece to safety, he moves a piece to safety, right? I move a piece to safety. Um, and, and, and it just goes on like that, right? And you could say he won a tempo, right? Like in, in the sense that he, he won, he puts piece to safety and attacked me. And then I just move my piece to safety, which means that he has like one tempo in this, like he's already free. He doesn't have to anymore move one of his pieces to safety. So I'm the last one to move something to safety here. But obviously this is a little bit of tempo analysis. I always like doing that. But if you look at this, like this knight is hanging and this bishop is hanging, right? When I take this, I get rid of the knight, and he gets rid of the bishop. But when I do this, I get rid of a piece that was protected, that I can't take after this exchange, that I can only still take while there's this tension on the queen. So that's the crucial part here. I'm taking a piece that wasn't hanging, and when he takes this, I can take the other piece afterwards. So. You have to take the piece that's defended while there's still tension on this queen here, while I can still capture that if it captures my queen. So the other way around this doesn't work, right? So I can always, at the end of this exchange, pick up the hanging piece. But at the end of the exchange, I could never pick up this bishop. So that's why this move order works better. So that's it for tempo analysis and um, move order analysis, right? Like really analyzing why these problems work the way they do very crucial to gaining a better understanding of them which is obviously what I'm trying to do right now all right so we'll do one more and then call it a day I think right like um, depending on how this one goes so it looks like a very checkmatey problem right like it's just out in the open attack from any direction right rook can go in with one move so check maybe and then uh, first I'll do this check then this diagonal is rather guarded by three pieces on, on, on d4 here, so that check doesn't really work. So let's instead look at something else. Also make sure to check out the material to confirm that we're actually losing hard, which is to be expected. So it's a classic checkmate problem. There's no advanced pawns. In terms of macroscopic analysis, there's a few options, right? Like um, there's, there's the possibility of checkmate, advanced pawn and just like winning material those are kind of the three major ways that you can just completely win a game in a f in one combination right whether you get a queen win material or uh, checkmate someone and of course you don't always know for sure at the start which one of it it is but you can always already start to make educated guesses in which direction you should be looking at. and this is typically one of those problems where you're so materially behind that the chance that you're gonna win material and win the game that way is, is practically zero, right? So that's that's just something to keep in mind to give you that initial um, To give you that initial Sense of what you're looking for right sense of direction in looking for moves So check here Um what if he goes directly to g1, actually? That's something I didn't consider, and so I don't have to even analyze rook f8 yet. It's a bit of efficiency on my part. Gotta look at... In that case, I do have to look at bishop f3, a very awkward, quiet move. Um, let's see if he can protect... Uh, yeah, I think I think he can with something like knight to f4, right? He can just defend this... Uh, so there's two defense squares, right? And only one of them is accessible. So that doesn't really seem to work. Got to also check this other move. In that case, yeah, that doesn't work either. So, so queen check. Not king g1. Queen e3 check, avoiding that d4 cutoff point. Right, just staying in front of that, and 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 nothing can get in the way here. So that means um, 
if he goes to f1 then then bishop h3 checkmate there's just geometrical patterns right like you just have to visualize the pieces here some basic stuff like this cross pattern here like this these four squares are blocked off this way so you can just try and visualize that and let's see so check check where does he go otherwise let's say he goes to g2 then bishop check goes to h1 check and checkmate with the queen right classic pattern um h1 is maybe slightly trickier no that's also an instant checkmate with uh bishop f3 so that's actually a checkmate fairly certain that this is the right one okay so he does go to f2 he does go to f2 actually i should have analyzed that i'm a, I'm, I'm an idiot for not analyzing that but i'm pretty sure that transposes into the same problem i don't have to even calculate with the rook um this was the pattern i saw earlier make sure not to do it the other way around then he can actually escape that's it that's how you do it so fairly fairly easy one this one is i took a long time because it's not blitz but if you just literally just sit there in silence say and you know in the first two seconds of the problem it's a checkmate you don't commentate in any of it pretty sure you could solve this in the, under a minute for sure average is still pretty long but yeah you should pretty easily be able to go through the forcing moves and just very quickly find out which one works right so th those were some pretty interesting problems allowed me to go over some pretty interesting concepts with you so I hope you guys enjoyed that, maybe took something away. And I will see you guys in the next one.